I can't thank you enough for all of your support and all of your generosity. It's making a huge, huge uh, impact. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to push back uh, on, the, uh, on the talk that I was going to give on the topic of grace, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll capture that uh, next week. Uh, but today, I want to focus in on something that all of us can do in the midst of this crisis. Uh, we had a couple of people that uh, came up to us this week saying, hey, I want to go. I want to be a part of the answer. I want to help. And, and, uh, and I know some of you have some skills that might uh, really be of use and of service. But in actuality, there is such an overwhelming need for housing and, 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 for, and for just basic life support that if we go and take one of those uh, places, it's going to be counterproductive. And I know all of us want to do something but what is it that we can do in the midst of challenging times like this? And that's what I really want to focus in on today. What I really want to draw our attention to is that all of us can pray. All of us can pray. I know you've already given and some of you might feel led uh, to give again. Maybe you say, oh, I'll forgo a cup of coffee and, and every little bit helps. And you can just go to the website and go to the Kayla Foundation uh, portion of the giving and, uh, and give and, and we'll continue to support it in the weeks to come. But at the end of the day, what every single one of us can do is pray. And that's what I want to draw our attention to here this morning, because I have a feeling that sometimes we think that prayer, oh man, it doesn't mean all that much. And, uh, and we think about prayer and we say, you know, that's kind of like a last resort. And it's almost like, well, certainly I can do something more than just pray. But I want to encourage you here this morning that prayer is the most important work that needs to be done in this particular crisis. And if I can gather the thousands of people that call Shoreline home and mobilize all of us to pray, I think when the, when the curtains are drawn back and we see what really happened, our prayers will be the most powerful influence on world events and local events than we could ever imagine. Let me, uh, let me share this verse with you. James chapter five and verse 16, it says, the prayer of a righteous person, man or woman, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Let me, let me uh, say this again, maybe from the opposite point of view. If we don't pray, there will not be effectiveness and there will not be power available. But when we do pray the prayers of righteous men and women, righteous uh, sons and daughters of God. Uh, when, 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 when the children of God come together and pray, there is great power unleashed. Uh, John Wesley, he said something that I think is really important for all of us to understand. He said that God does nothing in the world except in response to believing prayer. And I don't know all of the mysteries of the universe. I don't even know, uh, you know how God has set everything uh, up in the world. I'm learning just like you're learning. But I do know that if we pray, good things happen. And if we don't pray, it seems like the negative course and journey that people are on just continues. So I want to challenge you here this morning to engage in the high priority important, passionate work of prayer. In Philippians chapter four and verse six, it says basically, I mean, I, I love this. It says, pray about everything. Pray about everything. Now I know that some of you might be tempted to think, well, in the midst of a crisis like this, my small little needs and my small little concerns um, don't mean much. So why even offer my little concerns when there are so many big things that are taking place in the world. I just want to encourage you here this morning and let you know that God is big enough to handle it all. He can handle the big things that are happening in the world and he can also handle everything that's happening in your life, everything that's happening in your world. And so if it concerns you, it concerns God. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about, no matter what it is, great or small, 
bring all of your cares, cast all of your cares, bring all of your needs to the Lord because he cares for you. He loves you and he can do something about the circumstances in your life. Turn to your neighbor right now and just tell him, pray about everything. Just tell him, pray about everything. You know, Laura takes that verse literally. Honestly, it, it like, you know, sometimes I'm saying, really, Laura? She, she prays about everything. She prays about parking spaces. She drives into the, you know, into the mall or, or into Target, uh, Target. And, uh, and she's praying, uh, Lord, uh, I, I need favor for a good parking spot. And it's amazing to me, man. She just gets the, the spot right next to the handicapped parking. That one spot. She just gets it. She's, um, she's amazing that way. I don't even pray for parking because I drive an, a, an SUV and I don't like parking spots because then, you know, you got, you know, people that can ding your car and sometimes you can ding their car because, you, you know, it's a little bit bigger. And so I, I tend to park where nobody parks way far away. And I just think to myself, I'm getting my steps in. I'll park way out there. Nobody will bother me. But recently I've noticed that my car must be flirting with other cars because I'll park where there is no cars. And then when I come out of the store, it's surrounded. And there's like a whole bunch of parking spaces that are closer to the store that are unoccupied. But for some reason, people want to park by my car. So I've been praying about that because that's a big deal. The Bible says we ought to pray about everything. If it's important enough to you to care about, it's important enough for you to pray about. And whether it's in your personal family, in your relationships, maybe you've got, you know, a troubled uh, a son or a daughter, or maybe, you know, you've got some health challenges or bills to pay. Listen, if you're worried about it, don't say, oh God, I know you're busy with more important things, so I'm not even going to pray about it. No, pray about everything. Pray about everything. But as we think about what's taking place in the world today, it's really kind of interesting that the Bible kind of helps to, to focus in our, our, our prayers on some really specific areas that I think will have a huge impact on the world. And I, I, wanna, I wanna encourage you here today to, to think about this. This is God's word that historically has stood the test of time throughout all of the challenges and ups and downs of human history. And you think about, you know, the book was written, you know, the New Testament, mostly through Roman occupation and military drama. Then you think about, you know, World War I and World War II and all the different, you know, minor conflicts that have taken place throughout, you know, the world. Uh, this, this book has actually stood the test of time in the midst of all kinds of ups and downs. And, uh, and here we find some encouragement about prayer and especially as we're going through the challenge that we're going through right now, I think this will really serve us well. Um, one of the things that we find in the Bible is that we ought to pray for all people and leaders. We, we, we ought to pray. This, is, this isn't just, you know, like, um, oh, for old, you know, for old, olden days, you know, and New Testament times. This is really for us. This was like Holy Spirit inspired words for us to live by. So the Apostle Paul is talking to one of his sons in the faith. His name is Timothy. And he's telling him, you know, these are the important priorities of life. This is how you should live your life. And, he, and he's getting to the point of prayer. And listen to what he says to Timothy uh, about prayer. He says, I urge you, first of all, everyone say first. He says, first of all, pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way also for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful. Just pray for all people. So when, when you're thinking about what's taking place in our world today, I want you to pray. Pray for all of the people in Ukraine. How can you not be moved by, uh, by the suffering and the heartbreaking circumstances that these families are, are going through, um, losing their homes? And, and uh, you, you know, I heard stories uh, this week, you know, our, our shoreline Poland leaders were telling us that the, the stories are so heartbreaking that almost every day they've got to find a corner uh, somewhere so that they can, can just shed some tears and cry because their own hearts are breaking as they're serving, you know, the people who are coming into their world. But, uh, you know, uh, 
Wives having to say goodbye to their husbands at the border and fathers having to say goodbye to their children at the border so that these fathers and husbands can go back to protect their homes and, and, and somehow work in the midst of this tragedy. And, and, it's, and it's so real. We need to pray for the suffering in Ukraine, those who have lost loved ones, people who are struggling in, in the midst of, of horrific circumstances. We, we need to pray, uh, yes, even for, for, for Russia, we need to pray for the brave you know, protesters that are saying, hey, this is wrong and this should not uh, continue. We should pray uh, for all of the people surrounding this particular conflict. Uh, we, we should pray for our shoreline Poland uh, leaders and congregation as they are working 24-7. Uh, they, they asked us to pray. You know, you heard a little bit about, you know, the, 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 the orphans. Uh, there were like 50 or 60 orphans that this church in Ukraine said, can you come and help us with these orphans? Let me tell you what happened. Your generosity enabled them to secure the transportation of these orphans out of danger. Now they're traveling in Ukraine uh, away from the danger. But here's something that to pray about. Maybe you heard on the news that they had negotiated a ceasefire for humanitarian reasons. There are these, these corridors where people can go from the Ukraine uh, to Poland and to, and, and to safety and to sanctuary. And so while that corridor was open, the, uh, the transportation that we were able to secure through your generosity was actually brought to where the orphans are. But then that ceasefire collapsed and there was gunfire and it wasn't safe to return. But the transportation is there to get them from location to location until they can get to shoreline Poland and find safety in that place. I'm just asking you to pray. Pray for everything involved in this particular situation so that lives will be spared. And then specifically, he says, we ought to pray for our leaders. You know what? I don't care who you voted for. I don't care what your political affiliation is. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what a political mindset you have. The Bible says to pray for our leaders. Pray for them. Pray that God will download wisdom. If you think, you know, the people who are in authority right now are the smartest people in the world, pray for them anyway. If you don't think that they're very smart at all, pray that they get downloaded wisdom from heaven to make the right decisions today that prove to be the right decisions tomorrow and next week and next month. Pray for the leaders of our country. Pray for the leaders uh, around the world who are responding to this particular challenge. Pray for all people. Pray for leaders. Second thing that the Bible encourages us to do when it comes to pray praying for situations like this is pray for strength in the battle against evil. There's a story in the Old Testament found in Exodus chapter 17. Uh, the children of Israel are facing a battle against the Amalekites and uh, they are outnumbered. It's going to be a fierce battle. Moses calls Joshua, who is the military commander of the children of Israel, and he says, listen, gather your military uh, people together, get your advisors, plan a good strategy, get your fiercest warriors out front, and, and I'm going to go and I'm going to pray. You can read the story for yourself. It's found in Exodus chapter 17. As long as Moses' arms are lifted to heaven in prayer, the children of Israel have victory on the battlefield. But as the day progresses, Moses' hands get tired and his hands start to descend. And then when that happens, the Amalekites get the upper hand. Joshua, who's fighting in the battle, looks up and sees Moses and sees when his hands are raised, they've got the victory. When his hands get tired, it seems like the tide of war turns against him. So Joshua sends Aaron and her up to the mountain to lift up Moses' arms to make sure that the prevailing strength that comes from on high is present on the battlefield. Here's the point. It's hard not to, to take this away from the story. When we pray, strength is manifested. When we get tired and weak and maybe absent-minded about our prayers, the enemy can get the upper hand. And make no mistake about it, the enemy's fingerprints is all over this situation. There might be geopolitical strategies and, you know, all kinds of different things that are in the background. But the devil, he's the one who comes to kill, steal and destroy. And you know what? We need to pray for strength against the evil one. 
pray for strength in the midst of the battle. I, I was debating on whether or not I would even share this, but one of the tragedies that touched my heart so, so deeply um, about this particular situation is that, um, just kind of envision this uh, with me for a moment. You know, so, so these people are having to flee their homes, flee their cities. Um, if, if, if they escape without injury, that's, that's almost like a miracle. And then they get to the border. And when I found out about this, it made me so mad. Most of the people at the border are, are motivated positively. They wanna help. But organized crime also infiltrated uh, the borders uh, of Ukraine and would find uh, young women to, to capture and kidnap into sex trafficking. So after all of the drama of getting away from the war and traveling either by, by train or by foot to get to the border, and then there are these vicious wolves taking advantage of the tragedy. And man, something rose up on the inside of me say, no devil, you are not gonna get the victory here. We gotta pray, we gotta believe, we gotta trust that God is gonna do something supernatural in the midst of the struggle. You know, um, I, I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes our prayers uh, can be so predictable and, and maybe you say, well, you know, I wish my prayer life had more energy to it. I wish had, my prayer life had more emotion and passion associated with it. I think part of the reason why people, when they think about prayer, it seems like, oh man, it's like this boring spiritual exercise. It doesn't, doesn't seem to accomplish all that much is because we pray what we think God wants to hear rather than what's on our hearts. I think it boils down to something that simple. We pray what we think we ought to pray about rather than praying about what really matters to us. So when you read the book of Psalms, and all the different Psalms that are there uh, in, 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 in the Old Testament. All of them are like real, gut level, real expressions of life. Like this one that I found in, in Psalm 27, I was reading it the other day. It says, the Lord is my light. God, you are my light. You are my salvation. You're my fortress. You're my protection from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident for one thing I have asked of the Lord and that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life. That he will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me on a high rock then I will uh, hold up my head above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices and shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. You know what? We just talk. We talk out of our hearts. We pray what's real to us and watch our prayers be energized with passion and life. Pray for strength in the midst of the battle. You know, and it's not just something that's happening ab abroad. There are battles to fight against evil right here, right in our own cities. In fact, I was reading this morning an article about a pastor who had gathered, you know, some of his congregation to go into the subways of New York City just to pray, to believe that the rate of crime would decrease in their city. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? We can pray and the rates of crime can descend right here in Austin, Texas. We can pray for our neighborhoods. We can pray for our police officers. We can pray for, for God's sustaining power in the midst of the challenging circumstances in our own land as well. Could I hear a good amen? amen. So we pray for people. We pray for leaders. We pray for strength. We pray for peace. We pray for peace. You know, that whole passage in Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven, it says, be anxious for nothing. Pray about everything with thanksgiving. And then guess what happens? The peace of God rules and reigns in our hearts. And the, the peace that is offered here, I love it, is not the peace that comes from understanding, but actually the peace that transcends our understanding. In other words, there is a peace that comes into your life. When you understand something, you were confused about something, you were lost, but now you're found and there's peace that comes from understanding. 
But the peace that is promised here is peace that goes beyond our understanding. We, we don't know the answer. We're not sure how the outcome is gonna play out, but we still have the peace of God ruling and reigning in our hearts. And you know what? Not just personal peace in our own lives, but peace for the whole world. Psalm 46 and verse nine says, he makes wars to cease. He breaks the bow. He sh shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And then let me, let me close. I'm just gonna close. I'm gonna ask the band to come on out. I'm just gonna close with this final thought. But we can also pray in this season for the harvest. Pray for God's kingdom to move forward. Pray for Jesus to be glorified. Pray for, for many people to come to faith in God. I love what it says here in Matthew chapter nine and verse 38. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Many of you know that, that uh, we have been talking and sharing about how we wanna saturate the community of Austin with the good news of the gospel. And, and, uh, and we're so excited because we've been working and, uh, and strategizing and praying about how we can do that. And, uh, and so uh, starting here this month, there is going to be an onslaught of, of communication with Central Texas. There's gonna be billboards, 27 of them. There's gonna be radio spots and television spots. There, there's gonna be social media blitzes. There's gonna be mail outs going out to, to all kinds of different zip codes, all with the message that you can find hope and peace and, and community and life and forgiveness and grace at the church that God leads. And so we were praying, especially as this war unfolded about the storm that people sense that they're in. It seems like everything's a storm nowadays. And, uh, and we, wanted, we wanted to communicate to people that in the midst of the storm, you can get to shore. You can get to the safety of shore because at the shore, hope is waiting. At the shore, peace is waiting. At the shore, community is waiting. You don't have to go through life or the storms alone. And that became the creativity of the billboards that you're gonna see, 27 of them all throughout the city of Austin. And I wanna show you what they look like. This is what it's gonna be. There's gonna be that storm of waves in the background. Get to shore, hope is waiting. Get to shore, peace is waiting. Get to shore, you don't have to be alone out there. We want people to know that there's good news, that Jesus is the answer, that Jesus is our hope, and Jesus is our peace. And so I thought it might be fitting today to just conclude our service with a word of prayer. And I asked Laura because she prays so awesome. She's amazing. Um, we went on a prayer walk the other day. It was a 30 minute walk. We went on a prayer walk and we were supposed to pray together, but she prayed for the whole 30 minutes. She just, she just went to town. And I said, do I get a word in edgewise? But she's not gonna pray for 30 minutes. She's gonna pray real, real quick for these, for these four things that we talked about. Just praying for people, praying for leaders, praying uh, for the harvest, praying for strength, um, praying. Yeah, just, just let's pray together. We thank you that you are the God of the universe. Father, you hold the whole world in your hands. Father, you see it all above it all. Father, the beginning from the end. And Lord, you are taking care of things. Father, you are turning evil into good. Father, you are working behind the scenes in the heavenlies. Father, doing things beyond what we could even ever ask, wish, or imagine. And right now, Lord, we gather our hearts together in faith, trusting you. According to your word that we're two or more gathered in your name, here you are in our midst. So whatever we ask is touching anything, it will be done. And so today, God, we ask that you would touch our leaders. You would touch people all across the earth, Father. Right here, of course, in our community and around the world. Father, leaders 
that are looking to you for wisdom, even if they're not looking to you. Father, your word says that you turn the hearts of kings. And so, God, we're trusting you that you will move the hearts of these leaders to do exactly what needs to happen at the right moment, at the right time. Father, to bring peace and to bring the goodness of your love and your grace, Father, across the earth. Lord, we're trusting you to move in the hearts of leaders everywhere, here, Father, and across the earth. And Lord, we join our faith as well and believe that you will touch and bring strength, God, the lasting, enduring type of strength that people need across the earth, God, in the midst of physical difficulty, God, in the midst of emotional tragedy, God. Father, where they need food, Father, where they need clothing, Lord, where they need warmth, God, we're asking for miracles to take place, God, that you would give them strength beyond their ability. Father, we ask that you would touch us with your strength right here in our community. God, as we shine the light of Jesus everywhere we go, as we go into the blue, God, we thank you that you strengthen us for this moment in time. Father, we thank you that you give us your peace that surpasses all of our understanding. Father, we thank you that even in the middle of battles, God, we can be full of peace and full of joy and full of all the goodness and the fruit of the Spirit because you're our God. You live on the inside of us. You're the Prince of Peace. Let your peace blanket the earth, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you so much that you have given to us this prayer to pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out labors. And God, there are people everywhere praying. There are people everywhere willing to go and to make a difference. Father, people that are rising up strong across the earth, Christians and believers, Father, are right there with their arms wide open to receive the harvest. And so God, we pray that people everywhere will become alert, will become aware of their need for you. Father, when people see these billboards, Father, that you would help them to get to shore, get to the shoreline. Father, come and see and hear that you are good, that your grace and your mercy will follow them all the days of the earth, their lives. God, that your love will come and touch their lives. Father, today we join together and we trust you for these things in your holy name. And everybody said, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God praise together. I think what... God wants to do it in this moment is just kind of settle it in our hearts. And I'm gonna ask all of you to stand to your feet with nobody leaving early or moving around. I just want you to honor this moment because we're gonna sing uh, this song together and, uh, and just allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to seal in our hearts with this kind of sense of determination and, and this sense of courage and destiny that this is going to be the church's finest hour, that we are gonna rise above the challenges in our own life and in our world. And we're gonna see the kingdom of God come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, let's sing together and glorify.